Yeah, hello and welcome to another update video about Bitcoin. We want to take a look at the uh, bigger picture today. We want to start on the four hour chart. Just want to zoom out a little bit. Um, sometimes when it gets very difficult on the smaller time frames, it might make sense to, to zoom out a bit. Um, for everybody who's been with us here for a while, you know, you know that we are watching here for a possible one, two, one, two setup. Basically the move of the November lows um, as a wave one on the Bitcoin chart, then a wave two. Based on that, we are now in the third wave to the upside. In the third wave, we should see five waves. And um, ideally, happy days. Yeah, ideally, ideally in this current wave count, yeah, to these wave counts, we always get the levels that, if broken, mean the count isn't going to work out with a high likelihood. And we get the actual invalidation points. So here it's like, if price breaks below the 78.6 FIB level on the yellow support area, that is the 22K level, then ideally we don't want to break that, right, in this scenario. If we do, this 1-2 setup in yellow is likely not going to work out, okay? It's likely not going to work out and below the 10th of March low, it's completely invalidated. That's at 19.7K. That means to maintain the view of a 1212 setup, which is a very bullish setup, price needs to hold above 22k. We're quite far away from that. Yeah, we're quite far away from anything substantially bearish, to be honest, on the on the Bitcoin chart. So we're currently holding bullish support. And um, from that point of view, it's all okay at the moment. Altcoins, of course, different today and yesterday. Um, but they, you know, they are different than Bitcoin, right? They are more risky yeah in, and you see these sell off usually when there's a bit of a risk of mentality um often say that most altcoins are quite bad the charts especially okay there are a few good ones i think most of the good ones we cover um i don't only cover good ones but i cover coins as well that are requested by by channel members and and uh, viewers and subscribers and they are not always solid charts but they typically highlight it um, but with altcoins, even more important than with Bitcoin, if support areas break, it is often, in my opinion, good to let them go. A lot of people don't do that. And then they are surprised why they lose 50, 60, 70, 80% because they did hang on to their losses. I often emphasize that with altcoins, I don't really like to hodl them. Uh, I do hodl some, yeah, but that's sort of historic reasons and uh, maybe because I was very early in them or just because I don't mind if they went to zero, yeah, because the positions are very small. Um, but um, in an ideal world, you always use a stop with altcoins, okay? And then you don't need to need to be surprised if prices go down lower because you stop out, you know, you stop out and it's not a big deal normally. But um, if you're over positioned or over leveraged on altcoins in the current market, it's difficult, but I've often said that. <clears throat> but um, the good news is, in this community here and honestly it's a very healthy community even after a more than a one year old uh, bear market one year long um there's not much fear going on which is so good yeah people usually know what's happening what's going on and people have an understanding of the charts which which is fantastic but anyway let's carry on <clears throat> so ideally we don't want to break below 22k if we do i've got some more support at 17.6k that would be the alternative bullish count um, where we have all of this as a larger wave one and all of the move down as a larger wave two, but only below 17.6k new bear market lows are very, very, or are getting very, very likely, okay? Um, there's, of course, a bearish scenario as well. A bearish wave count doesn't make much sense as long as we're holding over bullish support. I think what people just need to realize, of course, we could make another bear market low, but we are quite far away from that at the moment. Just be aware of that. What would be the bearish count? I did say that uh, quite a few times. The bearish count would simply be that this here is a wave Y to the upside at the moment. Yeah, we had a W, X, and this is a Y wave in an A, B, C, and we would now be coming down. But then again, this move down doesn't look impulsive, which is why I'm currently not, I don't see this as bearish. Okay. I see it as a correction in an overall uptrend in a possible early in the possible early stages of a bull market. Um, but as I also said, it's not going to be an easy ride. It's going to be a rocky road. But before we carry on, let's first take a look at what our sponsor Chart Prime has to offer. Chart Prime is a service that provides specific and exclusive trading view indicators. 
They've recently updated their website and consolidated their most popular features into three new indicators, all designed to enhance your trading journey. First up is the Market Oracle Pro. This tool, designed for precision, provides enhanced entry and exit signals along with three metrics aimed at deciphering market trends and optimizing your settings. Next, we have the Market Dynamics Pro. This unique tool merges Chart Prime's smart money concepts into a dynamic order blocks algorithm, striving to provide a more accurate representation of volume. Lastly, the Prime Oscillators Pro. This trend-based oscillator offers a variety of market insights, including entry and exit points, overbought and oversold conditions, and potential reversal areas. That's a brief overview of what's new from Chart Prime. Stay tuned for more updates, and if you'd like to sign up with them, just follow the link in the description that offers you a discount. So, okay, if we now zoom into the detail here, it has been a very, very choppy um, ride to the downside. Yeah, Bitcoin is grinding its way down in this descending price channel. This is currently, yeah, it, it currently seems to be adhering to this uh, descending channel. I don't know if we could make even a descending wedge out of it, maybe with a lot of um, imagination. Maybe, yeah, but it's not terribly well defined. Maybe here, but then again, I only have two touch points. Um, it's a bit more, it's probably more hopium than anything. If we added here a descending wedge, it's more like a channel, okay? Um, at least we have got enough touch points up there. So from that point of view, I think it's still going to go lower. Um, ideally, I'd like to see Bitcoin sort of around 24, 24 and a half K. Um, can turn around at any time, but now we made a double bottom. They typically don't hold. So ideally it's going to go lower. I'm still looking at this as a WXY structure here in the Y wave. We have an A, B, C. We're probably now in the, in the C wave. Bear in mind when we have a lot of fear going on in the market, sometimes we just don't get the exact pattern that we want. Um, eventually, I mean, the, all of this, they, they, all of this did morph quite a bit, okay? But essentially, we did end up where we wanted it to end up at, which is the 50% retracement, the 25.3K level. I've been talking about that for weeks. We did get there in the end in one way or another. Um, but ideally, it's still going to go a little lower just because this is not a clear bottoming structure. Nevertheless, um, it has done obviously enough in this entire correction, so it doesn't necessarily need to go any lower. But based on the structure, we are moving down lower so at the moment as long as we're holding that wave too high at 26.8k i would say we go down lower in this structure here i go to the one hour chart now mm, we have the situation that we're in this third wave of the c wave in the third wave we have an abc structure because of an ending diagonal structure and in the c wave we have a wave one done a wave two done probably the wave three and the wave four done now as well we could be heading down in the fifth wave now. So um, yesterday I warned you around the same time yesterday that Bitcoin could be the next one to drop and it did, but it's very stubborn. It just doesn't want to go below that 25.3K level. That indicates to me that most likely another flush is needed. Also, I don't really have the RSI where I want the RSI to be, especially on the daily chart. So our RSI is still a little too high. I it doesn't come down as much as I want it to come down. Mm, ideally, I want the RSI on the daily close to where it was on the 10th of March. Price is far away from that level. The RSI is not that far away. But if RSI comes close to 30 and price is above the 10th of March, that would be quite bullish. Okay, that would be quite bullish. Um, and uh, yeah, divergences would be quite bullish as well. But obviously at the moment, I don't uh, see, oh, do I see one? Yeah, there's a bit of a bullish divergence going on on the daily time frame, but nothing too clear. We're still in the bearish range for now. I'd like to get it closer to the 30 level in an ideal world. So all of that said, um, the idea is for Bitcoin to go down lower. Let me go back to the one hour chart actually. Um, there you go. Um, ideally going down lower. D is it going to fill in this structure exactly like that, which means another wave down in a five of wave three, another wave four and another wave five? Probably not. Yeah, because it is an ending diagonal. In an ending diagonal, we always need to be prepared that the counts are morphing and changing. However, until I see the count break, I will 
go with it. Okay. Um, and we are now in a situation where it's getting really interesting. I'm very interested in how this is going to continue because the altcoins selling off massively. Bitcoin very much holding. ETH maybe one more low could be done. Bitcoin maybe one more low could be done. Um, at the moment the trend is still down. Okay, so at no point we have called um, for a bottom to be in here yet, and and this was exactly the right decision. Um, but um, what you need to understand is that if this turns around to the upside, it, it can happen quite fast. So I'm technically, what I, what do I do? I'm not deploying a lot of cash at the moment. This is not the time for that, in my opinion. I think it's time to be still very careful because the trend is still down. Okay, the, the, the trend is down. I think we are in an overall bullish scenario, yes, but the short term trend is still down. So we're going to go down lower until price shows us an impulse to the upside. What do we think about that impulse which is coming? I think it will be very aggressive because things will happen very quickly and people will be caught out. So that's why technically I add a little bits and pieces here. Okay. And I am positioned long anyway on the Bitcoin uh, in, in Bitcoin. Well, not long, but I, I do obviously have my, my hotel portfolio. I do have um, my core positions and I'm, I'm happy, you know, um, I know some people always wait for the last low. Let me tell you, you don't need to wait for the last low to be successful at trading. Um, it's rarely perfect, but also in my opinion, it's not the time to just blindly buy every dip until you've run out of money. Um, but essentially that's up to you. At least I don't do that. I am very careful with positions at the moment, but will add more as we see the first impulse and the first three wave pullback. It's a very difficult market at the moment and a very difficult structure and a very difficult wave count as well. Okay, that's my update about Bitcoin. I hope you liked the update. If you did, please hit the like button, leave a comment and subscribe. And if you really like the content, then please check out the channel membership. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye bye.